All of them? Check, check one, two. Check, 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 check. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to another game here at the Trilly Athletic Complex as the Spartans of the University of Tampa come across the bay to take on the Tritons of Eckerd College in this mid-week game. Two SSC teams battle tonight, but it is a non-conference game as the Spartans come in with a record of 8-4 and four overall and 2-1 and one in conference play. The Tritons enter with a record of 4-6 and six and a record, conference record of 1-2. and two. Blake Breton here with the great Skip Matthews. Skip, welcome in to tonight's game. Thanks, Blake. It's good to be back. Beautiful night for a ball game. Looking forward to it. It is. We are moved up an hour with rain potentially coming in later tonight so we want to get this game in hopefully before the rain comes what have you seen in the forecast coming in looks like it's going to get maybe a 20 or 30 percent chance up until 11 o'clock then it's going to be pretty wet till about 5 a.m so moving up early we should have no problem tampa should be back home and uh, sound asleep by the time the drops start to fall partly cloudy right now 73 degrees here in st petersburg and the wind blowing out of the south southwest at about 15 miles an hour, so a lot different than this past weekend when the Tritons hosted here at the Turley Athletic Complex with the wind blowing in at about 20 miles an hour. So a little different for the pitchers tonight as they will uh, hope to keep the ball down and get a lot more ground balls as a lot of the pop flies we saw this weekend stayed in the ballpark. Tonight might not be the same story with the wind blowing out. It's a good test for the Tritons tonight. You get to see a team like Tampa this early. They've started to play well. They, they lost two of their first three. They've been on a little tear since then. So to get an opportunity to see a club like Tampa, get a look at their hitters, you'll probably see a mix of pitchers with it being a midweek game. You may see four or five guys. Nice chance to get some charting done and uh, get a look at what you're going to be seeing once conference time rolls around. And Tampa will be back here. In May, it's the last series of the regular season for both teams, I believe. Definitely for us here at Eckerd. And, um, yeah, so definitely good to see them this early. Obviously, things can change throughout the season, but it'll be a good test for both squads tonight. By May, they'll be completely different teams. It'll be fun to watch. Uh, I think both teams are going to develop and mature with the new faces. And I was talking to Coach Urso before the game, and he said he had three returning players. One guy hurt his back and is done for the year, so for the first time in his career, I believe, he's only got two returning position players, and uh, everybody's kind of trying to figure out where they fit. So by the time you get to May, everybody's going to have a really good idea where they fit. It's going to be a really nice conference contest. We're just about ready to get started here. We'll um, go through the starting lineups in just a few minutes, but uh, this past weekend... Tampa hosted Florida Southern, who is ranked fifth in the nation, and they took two out of three games over the weekend, over the mocks, over in Tampa. The Tritons went one and two this weekend as they hosted Lynn. The Tritons had a rough third inning in the first game last Friday night, and that was the difference in the ball game. They lost 9-6. to six. Came back with a big win on Saturday afternoon to get a doubleheader started with a 4-1 win. And then the bats just weren't there in game number two of that doubleheader as they fell 6-1. to one. Take a quick look at the starting lineups first for Tampa. Leading things off is the center fielder, Jose Cadenas. Batting second is the second baseman, Drew Earhard. Batting third, the left fielder, Nick Durr. Batting fourth, playing first base is Dan Sullivan. Batting fifth and catching is Josh Rulai. Batting sixth is the designated hitter, Luke McDonald. Batting seventh is the third baseman, Mikey Navarat. Batting eighth is the shortstop, it's Christian Flint. And batting ninth... It's the right fielder, Mauro Conde. Nick Constantacos will get the start on the hill for Tampa when they come up into the field in the bottom half of the first. For the Tritons, they'll lead things off with the right fielder, Mikey Burke. Batting second is the shortstop, Chase Acuff. 
Batting third, the center fielder, Sam Cochran. Batting fifth, excuse me, batting fourth, playing third base is Mitch D'Onofrio. Batting fifth, playing left field, Nick Arrivo. Batting sixth, the designated hitter, Santos Grande. Batting seventh, playing first base is Brock Hutchinson. Batting eighth and catching is Joe Gallagher. And batting ninth, playing second base is Mike Ballard. And towing the rubber for the Tritons, it's going to be Jake Sanderson getting the start. We'll step aside here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network for the playing of our national anthem. Back here at the Turley Athletic Complex, Blake Brenton and Skip Matthews with you tonight. And right before we have the anthem, we introduce the starting lineups, towing the rubber. It's Jake Sanderson. He gets his second start of the season and his fifth appearance. He is 0-1 on the year and has a 9.00 earned run average. He'll look to get that ERA down tonight with a good outing against the Spartans of Tampa. And it's good to see Brock Hutchinson getting his first start of the year over at first base. This is the fourth game he has played in as well. I saw Sanderson pitch uh, in the first series. And uh, he's, it takes a while for him to settle in. He's, uh, he hides the ball well. The ball comes right out from a three-quarter slot. Uh, I think he can be really effective in our conference because his ball's got a lot of run, dives a little bit for him. He's got nice action. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see how he's going to get once he gets more comfortable in, uh, in the rotation. He's, he may be able to help us a lot this year. He's only pitched six innings so far in the season. He's given up nine hits, seven runs, six of them earned. He's got five walks to just two strikeouts. Nice way to see what you got facing the lineup like Tampa's. You know, I had Jake in class this morning, and he was pretty fired up. I, th I thought he was in a daze. I said, what's wrong? He said, well, I'm starting tonight, man. I'm starting against Tampa. I said, ah, it's just another team. <laughs> he smiled, nodded his head. He's ready to go. Jose Cadenas will lead things off for Tampa. First pitch is fouled out of play. It is nothing in one. And the first pitch happened at 5.01 p.m. Now the 0-1 from Sanderson. Swing and a miss, strike two. Cadenas is a free swinger. He's got 10 strikeouts in 10 games. He's going to get after it. If it's around the dish, he's going to swing. He swung so hard he lost his arm protector. Way behind in the count, nothing in two. Fastball grounded to D'Onofrio. He'll throw over and a nice pick out of the dirt by Hutchinson, and there's one away. Here in the top of the first. Now batting number two, Drew Earhart. 
That'll bring up the second baseman, Drew Earhard. Earhard batting 319 on the year. Shows bunt and will take it low and inside, 1-0. and oh. Here's an example of that arm slot. That ball ran down and in for him really well. If you can start that a little more middle, it's going to be an effective pitch. 1-0, missed inside, and it's 2-0. and oh. The 2-0 from Sanderson is a called strike. Right now he's sitting 88-89 with his fastball. 2-1. Another called strike. And the count is even. Earhart has struck out five times on the year. He's only walked four. And the 2-2 pitch. Lined into left. And a fair ball. It'll drop in. He'll round first and head to second. And a stand-up double for Earhard here in the top of the first and the first hit of the ball game. Now five, Nick Durr. And it'll bring up the left fielder, Nick Durr. Nice velocity differential. Just got it up a little bit. That slider came in at 72. It's nice differential, 89-72. Their bats 290 on the year. He has three runs driven in and a runner on second, and he takes a ball high. It's 1-0. Oh. The 1-0 oh. missed inside, and it's 2-0. Earhart has scored 13 runs on the year. He stands at second after his double. Now the 2-0. Missed low and away. It's 3-0. Two Durr. The 3-0, and it's ball four, and there's two aboard here in the top of the first for the Spartans. Now batting number 26, Dan Sullivan. And that'll be the first baseman, Dan, Dan Sullivan, to bat. Sullivan's batting 368 on the season. He has 16 runs driven in on his 14 hits. That one's fouled off the end of the bat, and it's nothing in one to Sullivan. Two on, one out, top of the first inning. The 0-1. That one gets by Gallagher, and both runners will advance. One ball and one strike to Sullivan. He has two runners in scoring position now. Only one out here in the inning. He's got to get comfortable with that arm slot. Right now he's a little erratic, trying to drop down on occasion even further than he normally would throw. He's got to settle into a consistent slot early in the game. There it is. This one's popped up and out of play. It's now one and two. One, two, swing and a miss, strike three. 
Sullivan's down on strikes, and there's two outs in the inning. For the catcher, Josh Rulai. It's a big out in that situation. Sullivan, big left-handed hitter. Wind's picked up a little bit, blowing a left field right now. That was Sullivan's 10th strikeout of the season. Now Rulai has a chance to drive in the runs with two in scoring position as he takes a ball low and away. It's 1-0. and Earhart the runner at third, Durr at second. The 1-0 pitch is a check swing. He can't hold back, and it's 1-1. One and one. Rulai batting 317 on the season. He has 12 runs driven in on 13 hits. The 1-1 in the dirt and stopped by Gallagher, and it's 2-1. Release point's hard to pick up. It's hard. It's just as hard for the catcher as it is for the hitter. Brings it right out from behind his back, and the ball just pops out on you. And if he stays with that slider a little bit too long, that's when he starts to lose it in the left-handed batter's box. That one's fouled back. Two and two now. Sanderson set and delivers. Rulai checks his swing. And the count's now full at three and two. Age old argument. When does college baseball in our conference go to the three man crew with umpires? You can't get that call with the umpire standing at second base, but if you have a third guy at first base, you might get that call. That 3 2 pitch is chopped foul. And we'll do it again. I've noticed that a lot in college baseball and softball. You get a, a check swing like that, and the umpire's in the middle of the field, and it's, he's not going to be able to make that call he unless he comes all the way through. Right. He can't tell if the ball went past the front knee, the front edge of the plate. He's looking straight in on the play. As that ball gets away from Gallagher, it's ball four. Earhart will come in to score on the wild pitch, and Rulai is aboard with a walk. Durr moves up to third. It's first and third with two outs, but a run is in here in the top of the first. It's just staying with that pitch a little bit too long. He's going to let it go a little bit sooner. He's going to get better break on it. Keep it in the strike zone. It'll now be the designated hitter, Luke McDonald, digging in. McDonald is batting 263 on the season, and he'll take a strike at the knees, nothing in one. First career start. He's got a lot of things going on right now. He'll settle down. And that one missed just low, and it's one and one. And a called strike again at the knees. One and two, the count. One, two, skipped in the dirt. Gallagher able to stay in front of it this time. It's two and two. Two on and two out here in the first. One run already in for the Spartans. Durr stands at third, Rulai at first. The 2-2 two -two pitch, pitch just missed. Sanderson thought he had the strikeout. He started walking towards the dugout, but the count is now full to McDonald. Pitch chop foul. It's three and two again. Rulai was off with the pitch. And he will be again this time. With a full count and two out. Yeah. 
the 3-2. Swing and a miss, strike three, second strikeout of the inning for Sanderson. But the Spartans pick up a run on a hit. No errors and leave two on base in the top half of the first half inning in the books. And it's 1-0 in favor of Tampa here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. Hi, I'm Fernanda Ruiz from the volleyball team and also SEC president. And I'm Drew Martin, a pitcher on the baseball team. You know, a big reason why our teams succeed on and off the court every year is because of our huge support. We want to thank the Two Steel Society for helping fund our teams. Even a small gift can go towards things such as scholarships, travel, uniforms and equipment, as well as many other things. Please consider becoming a part of the Teal and Steel Society today. If you want to learn more, go to EckertTritons.com. Thank you and go, go Tritons. Tritons. Such a nice day. Oh, so warm today. So how are your Back at the Turley Athletic Complex as we get ready for the bottom half of the first inning. And on the mound for Tampa is Nick Constant Tacos making his fourth start of the year. He is 1-1 one and, one and has a 7.71 earned run average. Leaving things off for the Tritons will be the right fielder, Mikey Burke. Burke started every game of the year for the Tritons. He's batting 293. He has 12 hits and 41 at bats, and he'll take a ball high, 1 0, to start the bottom half of the first. That one's chopped towards third and over the head of Navarrete, and Burke is trying to hustle to second, and he's got a lead off double. He's shown glimpses of speed early in the year. He's going to be a nice catalyst for the offense. I was assuming he would just stop at first, but he was running out of the box, made a hard turn, and got to second. Acuff will be the batter. Chase batting 293 on the year. I think Cadenas felt the same way. He just he got to the ball, but he was in no hurry to throw it in until he saw him make that turn. First pitch swinging for Acuff. That's a foul ball down the line. And it's nothing in one to Acuff. The Tritons had two or three of those Saturday afternoon that were called foul that were right hairline to the left of the foul line. Acuff looking to drive in his eighth run of the year with Burke standing on second. Nobody out here in the bottom of the first. The 0-1 is a breaking pitch, and chop just past the Navarrete at third. That'll get all the way to the outfield. Burke will round third. He'll head for home and score, and it's back-to-back -back doubles for the Tritons to lead things off here in the first inning. Nice piece of hitting. All you got to do is put the ball in play. Acuff does a really, really nice job of keeping the ball between the white lines. He's uh, very adept at just getting the ball on the ground. Force guys to make a play. Keep it out of the air. Acuff stands at second, and the batter will be the center fielder, Sam Cochran. Cochran batting 282 on the year. He has five RBI. 
and a chance at number six here in the bottom of the first. He'll swing at the first pitch and foul it out of play. It's nothing in one. Sammy's shown a nice approach early in the year. He's a lot quieter at the plate than he was even last year. He's developed and matured each year that he's come back here. The 0 1. Ground ball right up the middle. That's a base hit. A couple round third. He will come in to score. And the throw will be cut off. And that's another. And then uh, a I'm sorry, Cochran will get to second. I think that should be ruled a double for him as well as he was off and running. Skip, you're an, a, a rules official. Is that a double or a single? Uh, you know, I have the advantage of seeing the instant replay, but I would say that that's got to be ruled a a single, and he advances on, on the, the throw on the only throw? because the ball went past second base to the cutoff man. Uh, he kept running, but he more slowed down and read the throw than he did keep it a, a, a dead sprint. It's a tough play without instant replay, but... I'd say it's a single and uh, advances on the throw. I'm spoiled. Working in the big leagues, you get instant replay from all kinds of angles. Here, you got to trust your judgment. Mm -hmm. It's a tough job scoring college baseball, for sure. The batter is Mitch D'Onofrio. He'll foul the first pitch out of play. Nothing in one to him. Three straight hits for the Tritons to lead off the bottom of the first inning. And they have a 2-1 to one lead now after those three hits. The 0-1, high fly ball left field. Durr drifting over towards the foul line at the track at the wall. Goodbye, home run for Mitch D'Onofrio as he hits it down the line and over the 325 sign, and the Tritons will have a 4-1 to one lead here in the first inning. Nice piece of hitting by D'Onofrio. Left fielder made a heck of an attempt. Went up high enough that he got his arm uh, caught on the top of the fence and his glove fell over. Really nice piece of hitting, getting it up in the wind with the wind blowing out to left field. He turned on that one pretty good. D'Onofrio hit one towards that 325 sign earlier this weekend, but with the wind blowing in, it hit off the wall. So I think he likes that spot early on this season. Constantakos has given up 13 hits now in uh, just over nine innings. Get a feast on the fact that there's nobody in the bullpen. Not try to do too much with every at-bat. Just get the ball in play. Just keep this rolling. He had given up eight runs coming into the ball game and four here in the first inning. And there's still nobody out for the Tritons. Nick Arrivo will be the batter for Eckerd. Arrivo's batting 237 on the year. He has nine hits and 38 at bats. The bases are empty and nobody out, but four runs already in for Eckerd. And Arrivo will take a ball from Constant Tacos. And that one catches the corner. It counts even at one. Breaking balls high. It's two and one. Fouled in the screen. Counts now even at two. Reville's very much a rhythm hitter. He hasn't really found it yet, but he's not a 230 hitter. He'll finish the season over 300. Fouls another one into the screen. Great eye hand coordination. Feast on the fastball, really picks it out well in the count. 
he'll be a hitter that can carry the team for a week or 10 days at a time. The 2-2. Two -two. Chopped towards third, and this one gets into the outfield. Another base hit for the Tritons as that's five batters and five hits. That's the rhythm example right there. You saw that big looping curveball. Nick stayed back, stayed back, stayed back, and then just got his hands to the ball. Just enough to drive it in the 5-6 hole. Good example of being a rhythm hitter. And now stepping up to the plate is the designated hitter, Santos Grande. Grande batting 400 on the year. He has 14 hits and 35 at bats. As Constant Tacos throws over to first to check Arrivo. Arrivo three for four in stolen base attempts this year. That ball missed. To Grande, it's one and zero. Oh. And another throw over to first. Sullivan not able to glove that, but it hits a Revo and stays close. The 1 0 swing and a miss, strike one to Grande. It's a big curveball. Big looping curveball. It's tough to stay back on that. Santos came out of his shoes on that one. A Revo, a short lead at first. The 1 1. Swing and a miss, strike two. And another throw over to first. Arrivo dives back in safely. Becker's 23 for 27 on the year in stolen bases, so there's a chance they're going to run in any count. That one's fouled off. It's one and two. I was just looking at that stat as well. They started running a lot this weekend. Arrivo picked up, I think, two stolen bases. Right. Cochran picked up about six stolen bases this weekend. Our conference, every game is a battle, and any advantage you can pick up, any extra base you can get, you, you've got to try to take advantage of it. Air on the side of being overly aggressive for sure. Count is one and two to Grande. The pitch missed inside, and it's two and two. Another throw over to first. This one a little closer. As Arrivo gets in safely again. The 2-2 two -two fouled out of play. Skip, as a hitter, every time they throw over to first, how does that affect your, your timing at the plate and your, your thought process? You know, it just gives you an opportunity to see a pitcher's movements. You see how his shoulders move. You see how quick his hips are. It helps you kind of figure out where the velocity is going to go. I think it actually helps the hitter relax. It doesn't really make you pump up anymore. It makes you kind of slow it down a bit. The 2-2 two -two is swung on and missed. It's a tough pitch. And the first out of the inning. Did a nice mix right there. And the batter will be the first baseman, Brock Hutchinson. Hutchinson is over 4 in his at-bats this season. But he makes his first start of the year at first base. And another throw over to first. I think Arriva was two steps off the bag that time. Just kind of fell down to the bag. And the first pitch to Hutchinson is swung on and missed. It's nothing in one. The 0-1, swing and a miss, strike two. It's 
Big mix of emotions when you get your first start. You know, you got Sanderson getting his first start. You got Brock getting his first start here today. A lot of emotion going on there, a lot of adrenaline. You're going to overswing. You see the pitch, you think you get your hands to it, but your hands actually slow down a little bit because you get so much adrenaline going. It takes you a second just to trigger. Looks like he's got a little bit of a split grip. That one misses way high. One ball and two strikes to Hutchinson. I've not seen him hit very often, but it looks like he uses a split hand grip. He's got about a half inch gap between his hands. Some guys like that. They like the feel of control they get with the top hand. It's popped up into center. Cadenas comes in and makes the grab, and there's two away in the bottom of the first. And it'll be the catcher, Joe Gallagher, to bat. Gallagher is 3 for 10 on the season. It's his fourth start of the year. And he'll take a strike down the middle, nothing in one. Breaking pitch, low and away. It's one and one. I like what Bo's done with the lineup today, giving the younger guys an opportunity to get in, give a couple of new guys some starts, let them get their feet wet, let them see Tampa. It's a, it's a really, really intelligent move doing this early in the year to give them a good shot. I like it. Arrivo goes this time. It's a swing and a miss, and he is in there safely. The count will be one and two on Gallagher, but... He now has a runner in scoring position, and Arivo picks up his fourth stolen base of the year. Great read by Nick. Full speed, first two steps. Executed that steal well. The one, two at the knees, called strike three, and the inning is over. But the Tritons pick up four runs on five straight hits to lead off the inning. No errors. They leave one on base. One inning in the books. It's four to one in favor of the Tritons here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. Back at the Turley Athletic Complex, Blake Britton and Skip Matthews with you here tonight. The Tritons, five straight hits to lead off their half of the first inning. They have a 4-1 to lead. Leading things off here in the top of the second is the third baseman, Mikey Navarat. Nice opportunity for Sanderson to settle down now. He's got a four-run cushion, a three-run cushion. Really nice opportunity to see what he can do throwing strikes. And he'll get a called strike here. Nothing in one. If he commits to that slider, it's a nice pitch. 
And Navarrete will swing and miss as he tries to hold back on his check swing. It's nothing and two now. Grounded right back to Sanderson. He's able to compose himself and throw over to first to retire Navarrete. And there is one out here in the second. It will be the shortstop, Christian Flint. Flint batting 316 on the year. Every school in America does PFPs. Pitchers fielding practice. Hit balls back to the pitcher, back to the pitcher. Gets another ground ball here to second base. Nicely done. Ballard over to Hutchinson, and there's two away. The, uh, the ground ball is hit back to the pitcher, though it seems to be a very simple play. You just knock it down. You got time. You throw it to first base. Pitchers are so locked into a delivery and a release point that when they pick that ball up, all of a sudden it's like a foreign object in their hands. You see a lot of guys airmail it to first base, bounce it up to first base. Heck, there's guys in the big leagues that have to throw it underhand because they can't throw it overhand to first on that comebacker. Mauro Conde batting here with two out and nobody on. And a called strike at the knees. Counts even at one. He's committing to that pitch now. Keeping his hips closed a little bit longer. Conde is three for eight on the year. Swing and a miss, strike two. One ball and two strikes to the Tampa right fielder. The one, two. Swing and a miss, strike three. It's a one, two, three inning. For Sanderson in the top half of the second. One and a half in the books. The Tritons lead it 4-1 to one here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. Back at the Turley Athletic Complex as we begin the bottom half of the second inning, leaving things off for Eckerd will be the second baseman, Mike Ballard. Ballard is batting 273 on the year. And he has started every game for the Tritons. He will take a called strike from Nick Constantacos. Constantacos has to kind of do the same thing. Uh, he's got to settle down, not look backwards. Pitch ahead in the count. He's got to settle down, throw strikes right here so the gap doesn't widen any more than it is. The 1-1 one, one to Ballard, swung on. Lined into center. Cadenas drifts back, and he will make the grab, and there's one out here in the bottom of the second. Back to the top of the order for the Tritons. Right fielder Mikey Burke will bat. He doubled his first time up and scored for the Tritons. Burke shows bunt, pulls back, and that ball misses high. It's 1-0. Another one missed high, and all the way back to the fence again. Two balls and no strikes to Burke. Right now the umpire, home plate umpire is asking the catcher, can, can you see that pitch okay? 
That's two in a row that he missed above his eyes. The 2 0 missed outside, and it's 3 0 to Burke. It's one of the weak spots of wearing the hockey helmet, the point that comes out over your eyebrows. Some guys have trouble seeing up on that pitch that's above their glove. Burke taking there a called strike. It's 3 and 1. And he takes another strike, this time at the knees, and the count's now full. The lights are on at Turley, Blake. They just popped on. I see it's getting a little darker to the west. And that one just missed. Ball four. Burke is aboard for the second time in the game. Now batting number 11, Chase Acuff. Chase Acuff will step back to the plate for the second time. He doubled his first time up and scored a run. And he picked up the first RBI of the game. Wouldn't be surprised to see him try to lay down a bun here. Third baseman's playing back a little bit. Chase handles the bat well. And a throw over to first. Burke back in safely. He is 8 for 8 in stolen bases this year. Hot shot, fouled up the line. No balls and one strike to Acuff. Feels like the temperature's dropped too a few degrees since the lights have come on. Jump there, he just didn't want to take it. That a one, bit of a quick pitch by Constantinos. That pitch missed low and away. It's one and one to a cuff. And a pitch out, and Burke is going to probably be thrown out. Yep. The Spartans thought he was going, and a pitch out. And they gun Burke down at second. Now there's two outs in the inning. Nobody on base for Acuff. One ball and two strikes. That's the first time Burke's been caught stealing this year. Ground ball right back up the middle. Earhart dives to keep it in the infield, but Acuff has another hit. And he's aboard with two outs in the inning. Sam Cochran will be the batter. Cochran has an RBI hit and a run scored. Acuff has yet to attempt a stolen base this year as he leads from first. And Cochran will take a ball inside, 1-0. and oh. 1-0, off the end of the bat, fielded by Tacos. He'll actually run over and step on the bag himself to retire Cochran. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on for the Tritons in the second. Two innings in the books. It's 4-1 to one in favor of Eckert here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network.
This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams. Discover your talents. Get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. Top of the third inning here at the Turley Athletic Complex. Jake Sanderson on the hill for the Tritons. Had a 1-2-3 inning in the second. He's given up one hit, one run. He's got two walks and three strikeouts through the first two innings of play here tonight. Back to the top of the order now for Tampa. Jose Cadenas will lead things off. He grounded out to third his first time up. And a called strike on the outside corner. It's nothing in one. The 0-1 outside corner called strike two. <coughs> now the 0-2. Swing and a miss, strike three, and that's strikeout number four for Sanderson. And one away here in the top of the third. It'll be Drew Earhart. Earhart doubled and scored the only run for Tampa back in the first inning. Sanderson settled down nice now. He's going fastball slider, living with that slider. So it's becoming a really effective pitch. High fly ball, center field. Cochran drifting back. And will make the grab just in front of the warning track. Two away here in the third. Sammy knew he was getting close. He had a, the ball had a little drift because of the wind. The nice thing about this field here at Turley is the shell warning track. You can tell when you change from grass to shell, which lets you know you got 15 feet before you hit the fence. Sammy played that really well. Nick Durr will bat. He walked his first time up, and he takes a ball low and away. Coach Beauregard and myself spent a winter break putting that warning track in when he was coaching the softball team, and I had the baseball team here. Chopper so over the head of D'Onofrio, and that'll be a base hit for Durr. He rounds first hard, but we'll stop there with a two-out single. Now number 26, Dan Sullivan. Feels playing hard at this time of the year. Hard to get enough water on it. It's dry season. Ball's really coming up off that grass hard. Dura aboard for the second time tonight. And Dan Sullivan will bat. Sullivan struck out his first time up. And that one missed low. It's 1-0. and oh. And I just noticed Ballard is playing, looks like about 6 to 8 feet into right field. With a hard-hitting left-hander up, he'll have a lot of ground to cover. Swing and a miss, strike one. They're in a short lead at first. The 1-1 pitch is in the dirt. And it'll hit Sullivan in the foot, I believe, and he goes to first after being hit by the pitch. So Tampa now has two on, and there's two out in the inning. And it'll be the catcher, Josh Rulai. Rulai walked his first time up. And a called strike. No balls and one strike to Rulai.
the 0-1. That one's in the dirt. And stopped by Gallagher. 1-1 one one the count. There's the runner at second. Sullivan at first. The 1-1. One one. Ground ball. Up the middle. Acuff dives. Tosses to second. Not there. Ballard will throw home. The play at the plate is in time as Durr is thrown out as he tries to take home on the play. So that'll be a base hit, I believe, for Rulai, and he'll be stranded at first. So no runs, one hit, no errors, and two left on base for Tampa in the top half of the third. Two and a half in the books. It's 4-1 to one in favor of the Tritons here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. Back at the Turley Athletic Complex and a great defensive play by the Tritons here to end the top half of the third. There's a great play by Acuff laying it out, taking the ball off the ground up the middle. Not really sure if he was flipping to Ballard to try to get the out because it looked like the runner was already going to be there. But Ballard did a really nice job of listening to the guys on the corners who told him that the run was going was to try to score. He hears the four call, turns, makes a decent throw over the top of the runner who's standing at second base. That was a heck of a play by Ballard. A heck of a play to end the inning. That was a good heads-up play. It was, it was great by Acuff just to have the range to stop that ball from going into the outfield. Right. And, yeah, we don't know if he was trying to get the out still or not, but he was able to flip the ball up, keep it in play, and then Ballard with the heads-up to throw it home. And then a good tag by Gallagher to retire the side. So we get ready for the bottom half of the third here. Mitch D'Onofrio will lead things off. He had the two-run home run his first time up. And he'll get hit by that pitch on the forearm. And he is aboard for the second time. I guess he's aboard for the first time. He ran around the bases the first time up. So the Tritons have the leadoff man aboard. And it'll be the, the left fielder, Nick Arivo. Arivo singled his first time up. Joe didn't have a lot of opportunity to argue that call at the plate either because the slide was so wide to the third base side. The umpire had a great angle. Looked like he could have gotten tagged in the head, the shoulders, the back, the leg, the foot. He had several opportunities to tag him, so Joe couldn't really argue that play. The 0-1. In the dirt, and that one skips away. Rulai can't find it. Rounding second, and he'll stop there, is D'Onofrio. Rulai had a hard time locating the ball as it skipped up away from him. One ball and one strike now to Arivo, and he has a batter, or he has a runner in scoring position. Arivo has five RBI on the year. <laughs> Fouled out of play. One ball and two strikes now. Thank you. 
The one, two. Foul out of play again. D'Onofrio stands at second after being hit by the first pitch of this bottom of the third inning. The one-two pitch, breaking ball, hard hit in the left field on a line, and that'll drop in front of Durr. Rounding third and heading for home is D'Onofrio. He'll score, and it's an RBI single for Arivo, who is now two for two on the night. And the Tritons lead it five to one. Action in the bullpen. Looks like uh, Tampa guys waving hats down there, so their arm is ready in the pen. Joe's going to make a change. So Constant Tacos will exit. He throws two plus innings, gives up seven hits, five runs, all of them earned, one walk, two strikeouts. And he leaves a runner on first base with nobody out here in the bottom of the third inning. The new pitcher will be Bo Weiss. Weiss has thrown one point, one and two-thirds innings on the year. He's given up three hits, one run, two walks, and two strikeouts, and his earned run average is 5.4 on the year. Weiss, a big 6'3 right-hander. Transferred in from University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Comes right up over the top. He's going to challenge hitters. Completely different look from Constant Tacos. find the teams that are going to mature early in a season like this. Game number 11 for both clubs. Joe's trying to get some guys out there, give them a chance to play. Coach Bo's doing the same thing. It's a really even matchup right now. Eckerd with a four-run lead. But anything can happen in college baseball. Those aluminum bats can get hot pretty quick. Good early season matchup, though. Nice opportunity for both teams to learn from each other. Grande steps into the box for the second time. He'll take a called strike. Grande struck out his first time up. One on and nobody out here in the third for the Tritons. There's a line drive into right center field. That'll drop and get to the wall. That'll be a base hit for Grande. He will try to get to second. He'll get in easily as no one is covering the bag. And Arivo stopped at third. So it's a double for Grande. And the Tritons have two runners in scoring position for Brock Hutchinson. Santos dropped his hands on that pitch really well, went down and got it, got it right, barreled it up. Really nice piece of hitting. Hutchinson flew out to center his first time up. Brock does have one RBI on the year. He has a chance to pick up a couple more here. He'll take a ball inside. It's 1-0. and oh. 
Arrivo's at third, Grande at second. Hutchinson tries to drop a bunt. It's fouled off the plate and goes behind the catcher. One and one. Interesting. Safety squeeze. Element of surprise. The one one. Swung on and missed. It's one and two. The one two popped up. Left field. Durr underneath. That should score a run. Tagging from third is Arrivo. He'll come in, and he will score on a sacrifice fly from Hutchinson. So now the Tritons lead at 6-1 to one now. Two runs already in in the inning. And that will officially close the book on Constant Tacos. And the batter will be the catcher, Joe Gallagher. Gallagher bats with a runner on second and one out. He struck out looking his first time up. Swing and a miss, strike one. The 0 1. Fastball missed. It's nothing in two. Weiss comes set. The 0 2. Almost hit Gallagher in the head, and it's 1 and 2. Grande is going to be station to station, so we're just going to get the ball in play here to get his feet moving. And that one missed high, and it's two and two now. Gallagher's up on the bat, just trying to make contact. And that one's upstairs. It's three and two. Sometimes with the taller pitchers, especially guys that come right up over the top, they struggle to get the ball down because they have to somehow create a downward angle to the dish. Hard for them to do when he's coming right up over the top at 12 o'clock with his release. 3-2 is fouled out of play. Did a little bit better with it that time. It landed a little bit softer knee out front. Gave him the opportunity to get out over the pitch a little bit better. <laughs> again, the 3 2. And again, it's fouled out of play. Gallagher's battling up there. Really nice job. Three, two again, and another caught looking is Gallagher as he takes that for a called strike three and the second time he's been called out on strikes. And there's two outs now in the inning for Mike Ballard. Ballard flew out to center his first time up. Nice opportunity for a freshman to pick up an RBI here. Outfield playing fairly deep with this wind blowing the way it is. And that one's inside and high. 1-0. Oh. 
Left field cheated towards left center. Center field straight up. Right field pretty much straight up as well. one -oh, fouled into the screen. Counts even at one. Seen some young guys for record really take some good hacks early in the game. Aggressive at the plate. Breaking pitch is going to be a called strike to Ballard, and it's one and two. He throws that pitch for strikes. Boy, he doesn't miss with that breaking ball. The 2-2. Popped up right field. Conde drifts back and will come back in to make the play and retire the side. The Tritons pick up a, two runs on two hits. No errors and one left on in their half of the third. Three in the books. It's now 6-1 to one in favor of the Tritons here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. Fernando Ruiz from the volleyball team and also SEC president. And I'm Drew Martin, a pitcher on the baseball team. You know, a big reason why our teams succeed on and off the court every year is because of our huge support. We want to thank the Two Steel Society for helping fund our teams. Even a small gift can go towards things such as scholarships, travel, uniforms and equipment, as well as many other things. Please consider becoming a part of the Teal and Steel Society today. If you want to learn more, go to EckertTritons.com. Thank you and go, go Tritons. Tritons. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams. Discover your talents. Get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. We head to the top of the fourth inning. Jake Sanderson still on the mound for the Tritons as he's worked three very effective innings, thrown 50 pitches through his first three, and he will face the designated hitter, Luke McDonald. First up here in the fourth inning, McDonald struck out his first time up. And that pitch misses upstairs. It's 1-0. And the 1-0 is fouled out of play. Counts even at one. Sanderson has four strikeouts to just two walks. Three hits given up. The 1-1. Just missed. It's 2-1. That one's a bit low, and it's 3-1 and one to McDonald. It's starting to get hard to see. A Revo underneath. He'll make the grab to retire McDonald. This time of day here on this field, it's really, really hard to see with... Uh, Limited background, ball gets up in the sky. You get a little bit of depth now because we've got a good cloud cover, but it's just a, that time of twilight where that ball kind of disappears for a few seconds. Outfielders really have to talk to each other, and the outfielder's got to talk to the infielder who's coming back to try to help with the play as well. And a called strike to Mikey Navarrett. Navarrett grounded out to first or to the pitcher his first time up. The 0-1 fouled off, and it's nothing in two. Well, you know what? 
Breaking pitch in the dirt. And it's one and two. That pitch fouled off. Again, the one and two. Fisted it. That is going to be Arivo making the grab in left field. And there's two away here in the fourth. Now that number 20, Christian Flint. That Rhett's a strong kid. He got fisted on that pitch. He still hit it pretty well to the left field. Shortstop Christian Flint bats for the second time. He grounded out to second his first time up. Popped up right side. Hutchinson gives chase and will make the grab to retire the side. Nice play. Another 1-2-3 inning for Sanderson. Three and a half in the books. It's 6-1 to one in favor of Eckert here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. Bottom of the fourth inning in the top of the order up for the Tritons as Mikey Burke will bat for the third time. Burke is one for one on the day. He has a double, a run scored, and he walked his last time up. Bo Wise on the mound for Tampa. As he begins his second inning of work, that ball missed outside. It is 1-0 and to Burke. Breaking pitch in there for a called strike, and it's even at one. Another breaking ball outside corner, called strike two. I think that's the first breaking ball he's thrown in this the zone. Nice command of that pitch. Little stutter step there. The one, two. Check swing. Burke holds back, and it's two and two. Just past six o'clock here at the Turley Athletic Complex. We started an hour early with inclement weather in the forecast. Is that 2-2, two, two, and they'll say Burke couldn't hold back on this one, and he'll be called out on strikes to lead off the fourth. And, Skip, we can see the weather coming in. Sure can. We can see that line of that front. Now it is blowing towards the northeast, so it's kind of parallel to us now. And we just need another five innings for it to hold off. <laughs> it is moving more north than it is east. 
raining in Spring Hill, which is about an hour north of us. Acuff will bloop that one into left field, and he has another base hit. And he is three for three tonight. The DTN weather, which is always pretty accurate for us, shows a 60% chance starting at midnight. Nothing prior to that. So maybe that front's going to hold off us. I brought my rain clothes just in case, but <laughs> I'd rather not pull them out if we can get to that. Sam Cochran will bat for the third time. Cochran is one for two. With a double and a ground out, and he has an RBI and a run scored, and that pitch won't count as time was called prior to the pitch. And our home plate umpire almost got taken out by that pitch. That was wide of the zone. Yeah, that's, that's not a real good idea. Don't, don't lose the pitch out there. He apologized. It's not the hit the bull contest. Acuff, the runner at first after his third hit of the night. And Cochran will try to drop a bunt, but will foul it into the screen, and it's nothing in one. Lost art, Blake. Bunting with the aluminum bat. It's a lost art. Everybody works on it, but boy, it's hard to do effectively. The 0-1, chopper up the middle. And that'll get into center field. That'll be a base hit as Acuff will go to third. Cochran will retreat back to first, and the Tritons will have runners on the corners with one out here in the fourth. And the batter will be Mitch D'Onofrio. D'Onofrio one for one. He has a home run, two RBI, and two runs scored. Weiss keeps the ball up in the zone. D'Onofrio could take another one out of here. The wind's picked up again. Runner goes on the first pitch, and he'll be in safely. Cochran's ninth stolen base of the year. Now two runners in scoring position. One ball, no strikes to D'Onofrio. And that'll be a strike on D'Onofrio. I don't know if they called it on the swing or on the, the pitch. Swing. I yeah, it on I thought swing. it was a bit low. So, yep. one and one to count now. And that one was definitely swung on and missed. So it's one and two to D'Onofrio. Any ball hit with pace in the gap right now is going to score two. Two good base runners. <laughs> the one two popped up out of play behind us. And it's one and two still. Chase Acuff, the runner at third, and Sam Cochran, the runner at second. And that ball swung and missed by D'Onofrio. He goes down for the first time tonight. Now batting number 14, Nick Arrivo. Second strikeout in the inning for Wise. The batter will be Nick Arrivo. Arrivo is two for two tonight with a pair of singles. Has an RBI and a run scored. And inside, ball one.
1-0, fouled out of play. And it's 1-1. One and one. Called strike at the knees, and it's one and two to Arivo. Ground ball ripped through the left side. One run is in. Rounding third and heading for home is Cochran. He will score easily on the two RBI single. And now the ball gets away. Arivo will go to second. As it looked like Earhart had a hard time handling the throw coming in from left field. He tried to body up on it, but the ball just took a strange hop off the clay. Snuck by him and allowed Arrivo to advance another base. The batter will be Santos Grande, one for two. He doubled his last time up. And has a runner in scoring position with two outs here in the fourth. Fouled that one off. Grande will walk it off as he caught himself in the leg. Nothing in one to count. Swing and a miss, strike two. Eight to one, the score. And Tritons lead it. Breaking pitch outside. One and two to Grande. One, two is high, and it's even at two. The two, two. Breaking ball. Doesn't break, and it stays high, and it's full now to Grande. This is a spot we really got to want to hit right here. Comfortable lead. Don't guess. Take what he gives you. Popped up, and it'll be out of play. Out of play somewhere. No one saw the ball. <laughs> it's really hard to see right now. Three balls and two strikes to Grande. Arrivo stands at second. And a swing and a miss. Grande goes down on strikes for the second time. All three outs in the inning were strikeouts for Wise. But two runs score on three hits. One error and one left on base. Four innings in the books and the Tritons lead it 8-1 to one here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. Such a nice day. So warm today. So how are your classes going? 
Top of the fifth inning here at the Turley Athletic Complex. Blake Breton and Skip Matthews with you here tonight. Tritons lead it 8-1. to one. Jake Sanderson on the hill for the Tritons. He's pitched four so far, giving up just three hits, one run. He has four strikeouts and two walks. He'll face the nine-hole hitter in Mauro Conde. That pitch missed upstairs. It's 1-0. and Conde struck out his first time up. And fouled off. Sanderson's nice and loose. He's letting it go free and easy right now. One ball, one strike to Conde. No action in the Triton Penton, so they're going to stay with him. Lefty throwing for the Spartans. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Now Sanderson has had a long, a lot of long innings sitting in the dugout when the Tritons are on offense as they put four up in the first, two in the last two innings. Does that affect these young pitchers at all? It's a check swing and a ground ball back to Sanderson. Over to first, and Here's your answer. Conde is retired. He did a nice job with that. That's a tough play. Got it over there with some velocity. He's from Burlington, Mass., St. John's Prep. He's used to sitting in 30 degree weather. Center fielder Jose Cadonis bats. He is 0 for 2 tonight with a ground out and a strikeout. I'm guessing that's St. John's Prep Danvers, not St. John's Prep in uh, Shrewsbury. I missed low and away, 1 and 0. So I'm from up north too, and I've been down here for not too long, and you get acclimated to this weather pretty quickly. You do, and when it gets cold, you're not acclimated to that. Mm -hmm. I was here the other night, Friday night, for that game. <laughs> it was so cold. Goodness gracious. 2-0 and now to Cadenas. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a brutal night, Friday night. It's, uh, you know, when you're playing and coaching, you're wearing three layers. When you're watching a game as a fan, you're not wearing three layers. It was, it was not a good experience. I think the temperatures were right around 50 degrees, and the wind chills were down in the 40s, which northern people this time of year, that's a heat wave, but yeah. for us Floridians, it's <laughs> it's bitter cold. Yeah, That one's fouled out of play, and it counts now even at two. It's headed for the garden. I think as a pitcher, though, you still like any time your team can score you more runs. So. Sure. You sure. can sit on the bench as long as you want, as long as they're hitting the ball well. 8-1 to one the lead for the Tritons. The 2-2, two -two. ground ball. A cuff over to first. And in time, two away here in the fifth. You know, depending on the pitcher, a lot of pitchers get very comfortable when they're their team swinging the bat when they got a lead they can think about what they've done they can plan ahead they can they can look at the charts they can plan ahead to, to see who they're going to throw other pitchers don't want to see that they don't want to look at it and those are the guys that kind of get a little tightened up i like the guy who likes to study likes to get ready because that helps him relax drew Earhart in the box and he'll take a called strike it's nothing in one Earhart is one for two tonight he's got a double and he's the only run to score for Tampa thus far. And that one's fouled into the screen, and it's nothing in two. And I think the wind just shifted. It was blowing towards left field. I believe it's blowing now to right field. High fly ball, right center field. Cochran coming over, as is Burke. Burke will make the play, and the inning is over. So two straight one, two, three innings for Sanderson. 
Four and a half in the books. The Tritons lead it eight to one here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning. And it'll be Hutchinson, Gallagher, and Ballard to do up for the Tritons. Bo Wise on the mound for Tampa. He'll begin his third inning of work as he's on in relief. The Tritons have 11 hits and 8 runs already in their first four innings of work. Hutchinson 0 for 1 tonight. He has a sacrifice fly and an RBI. <laughs> First pitch is outside to Hutchinson, and it's 1 and 0. And a called strike on the outside corner. The 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball chopped towards third. Navarrete over to first. And Hutchinson is retired. That'll bring up the catcher, Joe Gallagher. Gallagher 0 for 2 tonight. Struck out looking both times up. Had a good at bat going last time. He got behind in the count 0 and 2, worked it full, fouled off a few good pitches, and then got caught looking outside. Outside corner called strike one, nothing in one to Gallagher. Tough adjustment for young hitters to use all fields. Joe will learn that as time comes come, goes on. Pretty good approach right there. One's fouled out of play. It's nothing in two. Pitch identification is so important at the college level. You see a little bit better velocity, a little better breaking ball than you're used to seeing. He's going to open up the right side of the field. He'll become a pretty good hitter. The 0-2 is way outside. One and two. Weiss is pounding the outside on everybody. He's not bringing the ball in close. Keeping it off everybody's hands. One, two, just missed. And it's two and two. Keep it. Two, two, ground ball. Nice play. Navarrete. Comes over and will make the throw to retire Gallagher. And there's two away here in the bottom of the fifth. In between Hub, going to his left. Nice play by Navarrete. Mike Ballard will be the batter. Ballard is 0 for 2 with two flyouts. Be line foul, right side, and out of play. 
Nice approach by Ballard. That's what we were just talking about, being able to open up the field and go the other way, especially with Weiss giving you that steady die the middle of the way. Popped up. High fly ball. Flint will field it and retire the side. So the first time the Tritons go down in order, five innings in the books, and it's 8-1 to one in favor of Eckert here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. here at the Turley Athletic Complex. Tritons lead it 8-1. to one. Nick Durr to lead things off here in the top of the sixth inning. And he'll face Sanderson, who's still on the hill. First pitch swung on it. Acuff with a nice dive. He'll throw over to first, but the throw is off the mark, and Durr is aboard for the third time tonight. a hit for Durr as Acuff dove for that was able to get the throw off but just not enough velocity or accuracy to make the play lead off hit for Tampa here in the sixth then it'll be Dan Sullivan to bat Sullivan is 0 for 1 he was hit by a pitch his last time up that one missed outside it's 1 and 0 The 1-0. Low and away. 2-0. Runner goes. Swing and a miss. Throw goes down to second. Not in time. And Durr has a stolen base. And he's in scoring position again. Durr's been stranded at third, and he was thrown out at the plate back in the third inning. Two balls and a strike to Sullivan. Pitch missed outside, and it's three and one. Sullivan has 16 RBI on the year. Sanderson comes set. And the 3-1. Fouled out of play. It's 3-2 and two now. The 
the 3-2 in the dirt. It's ball four. And there are two aboard here in the sixth for Tampa. Josh It'll be the catcher, Josh Rulai. Rulai is one for one. He's singled and walked. Quick trip to the mound for Coach Banks. Settled down Sanderson. He's getting up in the pitch count now. Got a little uh, action in the bullpen. I can't see a number. Banks is going to buy a little bit of time here, get through maybe another hitter, and then make a change. Eighty pitches so far for Sanderson. Colin Bakken warming up in the pen for the Tritons. Rulai now digs into the box. He bats with two on and nobody out here in the sixth. He'll take a ball low. It's 1-0. and oh. Durr stands at second after he singled to Acuff at short and then stole the base. And Sullivan was hit in the foot on the 3-2 pitch. He's at first. That pitch just missed. It's 2-0. and oh. 2-0, chopper towards third. That'll be called foul as D'Onofrio scoops the ball. His foot was on the bag. So Rulai stays alive. It's two and one now as the runners head back to their bags. Sanderson's not laboring, even though he's into the 80 count now with his pitches. Still around the dish. That pitch missed low and away. It's three and one. The three one. Called strike on the inside corner and it's full. That one's fouled off, and it's three and two still. Got to go to his bread and butter pitch. Keep throwing that slider in there. Three and two. Pitch missed low and inside, and the bases are now loaded. And here comes Coach Bo to make the change.
Sanderson Alexity pitched five plus innings, gave up four hits, one run. It was earned, two walks, four strikeouts. But he left the bases loaded for the new pitcher. Colin Bakken, who enters, making his seventh appearance of the year. He's thrown 11 and a third innings, given up nine hits, three runs. He has five walks and 12 strikeouts and a 2.38 earned run average. He pitched against Florida Southern earlier in the year, did a pretty good job, and he's going to uh, get a nice chance to pitch against Tampa here. Good for him to see those kind of hitters in our conference early on. Since he's a transfer, he's going to have to get used to what it's like to be here in the Sunshine State Conference where uh, one through nine can beat you any given night. Kind of a funky sidearm delivery. Throws strikes, fills it up. Five walks, but those five walks come from his, uh, he nibbles, keeps the ball in the corners, doesn't work middle third at all. He's got that frisbee slider that he can get up there too. Bakken will have his work cut out for him as he enters the game here with the bases loaded and nobody out. And the first batter he'll face is the designated hitter, Luke McDonald. McDonald is 0 for 2 tonight. And the first pitch from Bakken is a called strike. Nothing in one to McDonald. That one missed just low. It's one and one. There's the runner at third. Sullivan at second. Rulai at first. A single, a hit batsman, and a walk is how the runners are aboard. 1-1 one, one is swung on and missed. And it's 1-2 and two to McDonald. Big situation, 1-2. Ground ball, base hit up the middle. One run will score. Sullivan will be held at third. It's an RBI single for McDonald. And the score is now 8-2. to two. Mikey Navarrete now bats. He's 0 for 2 tonight. First pitch, a high fly ball, deep left field. Arrivo gives chase and will make the grab on the track. Tagging from third is Sullivan. He will score easily on the sacrifice fly. But there's an out in the inning. So two on and one out. The winds of Turley. The wind was blowing straight in from left on that pitch. Shifted from blowing straight out. Now it's blowing out to right. It's like being an old candlestick. Foul tipped into the glove of Gallagher. And the batter is Christian Flint. He is 0 for 2 tonight. That one missed low. It's one and one. 
Rulai at second, McDonald at first. The 1-1. One, one. Line drive, left center field. Cochran will come over and make the grab, and there's two away. That's a tough play. Line drive, not too far up off the ground. Really, you almost can struggle with that pitch in the lights because you're looking straight through the ball as you're trying to pick it up off a mid-high fly, fly ball. Love a pinch hitter for Tampa. John Pitchman will pinch hit, batting 172 on the year. Two outs here in the inning. And that one missed low. It's 1-0. and oh. Any ground ball out right here. Get out just giving up two runs. It's a good inning. The 1 0. Swing and a miss. Strike one. And that 1-1 one, one was low, and it's 2-1, two, two pitchmen. Pitchman has three RBI on the year. That one is driven into left field, and it is over the wall, and it's a home run. Four pitchmen, a pinch hit home run. It's a three run shot to left field. And Tampa is back in the ball game. Eight to six now the score. Bases are empty. And we're back at the top of the order. Jose Cadenas bats for the fourth time tonight. He's 0 for 3. And just missed the inside corner. 1 and 0. To Cadenas. Tough break for Bakken. Facing the pinch hitter, don't try to be too fine. You know your personnel, you know the matchups. Popped him up right side. Burke over near the line and will make the grab to retire the side. But five runs on three hits, no errors, and nobody left on. Five and a half in the books. The Tritons still lead. It's eight to six here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams. Discover your talents. Get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa.
you look at a play like that, you have a pinch hitter come into the game, and you're either making the right decision, the wrong decision, or it's a draw. In that case, he just threw the bad head at the ball, pretty good slider down and in, hit the ball through the wind, tip your cap to the hitter. That's, uh, that's just a, a good choice of matchups right there. Every coach knows their players, but, boy, that, that sure does make a coach look good when a swing like that happens. New pitcher on the mound as we begin the bottom half of the sixth. It'll be Michael Diemo. And he'll face Mikey Burke as that pitch missed outside. It's 1-0. and Third appearance on the season for Diemo. And a called strike there. It's 1-1. One one. Breaking ball. Fouled out of play. It's 1-2. and two. That one's in the dirt, and it's two and two now. And Skip, you mentioned earlier these aluminum bats, you can catch fire at any time and get back into a ball game. Boy, it's crazy. You can get fisted. We saw it earlier. Uh, Navarrete got fisted and drove the ball to left field almost to the warning track. It'll be popped up and stays in the field of play, but too far for any Tampa players to get to. And it's two and two still. I mean, you like to be selective in your pitch counts and terms of when you swing but in the college game you're, you're swinging fastballs you're trying to drive the ball the other way with the with the breaking pitch it's such a weapon you've just got to get your hacks it's not like using wood for sure 2-2 two -two, liner right back up the middle and that's a base hit for Burke his second hit of the day And the batter will be Acuff. Chase is three for three, a double and two singles. He's got an RBI and two runs scored. Acuff shows bunt, but will take a pitch outside. It's 1-0. and oh. 1-0 pitch. Ground ball to short. 6-4 to four to 3, and a double play turned for the Spartans. So the bases are empty and two out now for Sam Cochran, who is two for three tonight. That pitch missed upstairs, one and oh, two Cochran. Cochran also has an RBI and two runs driven in today. This one's fouled straight back. And will stay in play as Rulai drifts back and will make the play to retire the side. So the Tritons pick up a leadoff single but score no runs. And they leave them empty in the sixth. Six innings in the books. It's a two-run lead for the Tritons at 8-6 to six here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network.
Back here at the Truly Athletic Complex as we start the seventh inning. Eight to six. Tritons lead it. But a five-run spot in the sixth for Tampa as they come up again here in the seventh. Have made this game a little bit more interesting. Colin Bakken on the mound for the Tritons. He came on in relief last inning. And he will face Drew Earhard, who will lead things off. He's one for three tonight. Right now you pitch and you play defense. You got a two-run lead, nine outs to go. Just get one out at a time. Minimize the damage. Communicate on defense. Keep the game as simple as you can. The 0-1. Earhart able to check, and it's one and one. That one missed low and away. It's two and one. Tampa has six runs on six hits, one error, and they've left four on base. The Tritons have eight runs on 12 hits, no errors. They've also left four on base. This one's fouled out of play. Counts even at two. The 2 2. Popped up right side. Burke gives chase, but it'll go out of play. And we'll do it again. Again, the 2-2. This one's low and away. It's 3-2. and two. <laughs> Ground ball. Acuff backhands. And we'll throw over to first. There's one away here in the seventh. Nick Durr will bat. He is two for two. Reached base all three times tonight. And scored his last time up. Inside corner called strike one. Nothing in one to Durr. Nice play by Acuff. Backhand side. Played the ball with confidence. Threw it through. That one missed the low. It's one and one. You don't mind Bacon missing low right now. Let him keep the ball down in the, in the zone. Wind's blowing straight across left to right. Keep that ball down in the zone. Right-handers will not hurt you. Low and inside, and it's two and one. And a called strike at the knees inside corner. Counts even at two. The 2-2 two -two just missed and the count's full. Three, two. It's low. Ball four. Durr is aboard for the fourth time tonight. And the Spartans have one on and one out here in the seventh for the first baseman, Dan Sullivan. Sullivan is 0 for 1. He struck out his first time up. He's been hit by a pitch. The last two times he's been up. And he scored a run.
And that'll be it for Colin Bakken. One and a third inning, two hits, two runs, and a walk. Gil Colon will be the new pitcher for the Tritons. He's making his fifth appearance of the year. He's thrown four innings, given up five hits, three runs. He's got two walks and one strikeout. And he has an earned run average of One on and one out here in the top of the seventh inning. Dan Sullivan is the batter. Cologne finished with his warm-up tosses, and we're ready to get back to play here. First pitch to Sullivan is high. It's 1-0. and Tough guy to face, right? Coming right out of the pen. This kid's got a big swing. Popped him up. Left side. Acuff will come over into shallow left field and make the grab to retire Sullivan. And there's two outs now in the inning. Challenged him with the fastball up and away. That was a, that was a nice pitch. He couldn't stay off it. Catcher Josh Ruline now bats. He's one for one. And a couple of walks. And here comes Coach Bo again. So Cologne comes in to get Sullivan, and he is done. He does his job. Nice confidence builder for Cologne. And the, the new pitcher will be Drew Martin. He's been struggling with some forearm tenderness. It's just like his worked his way through it. Just the second game of the year. He's thrown just one inning, given up one hit, and he's faced three batters. Like both cash boxes. 
all the t-shirts, put everything in the big game box, yep. and then I'll take it when I leave. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to leave right away. I'm like the test of Joe. Um, one with seven, right? Eight. So this is a rule change in the major leagues, correct, Skip? It is. Now, you either finish the inning and your stint is done, or you have to face three batters. So if Martin comes in here and finishes this inning, then he's good. If he came in with less than two outs, he'd have to face the minimum of three batters unless he completed the inning to end it. So Colones would have technically still had to been pitching if he, he was in the big leagues. Pitching. That's correct. Yep. No more matchups. Martin's finished with his warm-up tosses, and he will face the catcher, Josh Rulai. Having scored for Joe Madden for several years with Tampa Bay, that'll take about 45 minutes off of Joe's game. He matched up everybody, including the janitor. <laughs> Rulai fouled the first pitch off from Martin. It's nothing and one. Nick Durr is the runner at first. He reached on a walk. The 0-1 skips in the dirt and Gallagher with a nice stop. I think Joe stopped it with part of his body. That's why the umpire gave him a couple extra seconds to compose himself. One and one now. Swing and a miss. Strike two as that ball gets away from Gallagher. And Durr will get to second. Not really sure what happened there. I don't think he got crossed up. Ball might have short hopped him on his throwing side. One, two, lined into left center, and it'll drop in for a hit in front of Cochran. Durr will stop at third. And Rulai has a base hit. And he's reached base all four times tonight. Coach Urso's upset with his runner at third base. He wanted that run to score. Runner hesitated. Dirt tried to get a second look at it instead of just running through it with two outs. Could be a costly mistake. Yeah, it looked like he was watching the ball to see if it was caught. Yeah, there's two outs, just run. Designated hitter Luke McDonald is up, and this one will drop in front of Ballard. He'll toss over to Acuff to retire the side. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. For Tampa in the seventh, it's time to stretch here at Turley. The Tritons lead at 8-6 to six here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. Hi, I'm Fernanda Reese from the volleyball team and also SEC president. And I'm Drew Martin, a pitcher on the baseball team. You know, a big reason why our teams succeed on and off the court every year is because of our huge support. We want to thank the Two Still Society for helping fund our teams. Even a small gift can go towards things such as scholarships, travel, uniforms and equipment, as well as many other things. Please consider becoming a part of the Teal and Steel Society today. If you want to learn more, go to EckertTritons.com. Thank you, and go, go Tritons. Tritons. We head to the bottom of the seventh inning, and the Tritons have a two-run lead. 
Michael Diemo on the mound for Tampa. As he begins his second inning of work coming out of the bullpen. He will face the third baseman, Mitch D'Onofrio. D'Onofrio is one for two. Had a two-run home run in the first. He got hit by a pitch and scored in the third and struck out swinging in the fourth. D'Onofrio will take a ball low. It's 1-0. and oh. Pick up an insurance run or two right here. Take the pressure off the bullpen. Time called again. Looks like Acuff is starting to loosen up in the pen. That one missed low and inside. It's 2-0. and oh. Patient at bats right now. Force the left-hander to throw strikes. <laughs> Fouled out of play. It's 2-1 and one now to D'Onofrio. And a called strike counts even in two. The 2-2. Two -two. There it is. Right center field on a line. Diving is... Conde, no, no catch. It'll be a base hit for D'Onofrio. Conde couldn't come up with it. Well, that's an optical illusion from here. It sure looked like he caught that ball. Again, that's the weakness of a two-man system. That first base umpire had to make that call from a further distance than he should have. Three-man crew, you'd have a guy behind second base who'd help with that play. A lot more movement with the umpire rotation when when you have three guys rather than two. Nick Arrivo bats. Three for three. Three singles on the night. Three RBI and a run scored. Arrivo tries to bunt and will foul this one back. That play for Conde and Wright would also be a benefit of the instant replay and Major League Baseball television. No doubt. Getting a good look at that. Maybe he trapped it I as he this, dove. That's, I think that's what happened, yeah. To us, from 320 feet away, it looks like he caught it. But out there, umpire had a pretty good angle. could see the bounce. Nothing in one now to Arrivo. Again, he shows bunt and will drop this one down. It'll be fielded by Diemo. And a sacrifice for Arrivo puts D'Onofrio in scoring position with one out here in the inning. Designated hitter Santos Grande now bats. He is one for three tonight. Santos must have pretty good splits against the lefty. It's interesting that you'd sacrifice bunt into the lefty-lefty matchup. Santos must swing it well against left-handers. He's aggressive. Wants to put the ball in play. Doesn't swing and miss much. Pitches upstairs. It's 1-0. Not much wind right now. Flag's hang, flag is hanging limp in right field. And 
and there's a called strike. Counts even at one. We gotta put them on. So an intentional walk for Grande. Interesting call after the called strike. Yeah. I think Bo's going to run for Grande right now. It is and it isn't. You know, Hutchinson in his first game doesn't have really have a lot of varsity at bats. 20s into pinch run for Grande. Weston Wiles. So you're taking the bat out of the left-hander's hands, putting it in Hutchinson's hands with just a few varsity ABs. He's 0 for 2 tonight. He does have a sacrifice fly RBI. It's a good way to establish more innings for yourself right here. Just put the ball in play and drive a run in. Two on, one out, bottom of the seventh. Hutchinson will take a strike on the outside corner. Nothing in one. Hutchinson will take time. That's Diemo's take to, has taken his time here this inning. He sure is. He stepped off a couple times. The batters have called a couple of times. That pitch missed outside and counts even at one. No pitch clock in college baseball, right? We tried it a few years ago, and with the two-man crew, it's really hard to have the base umpire run a stopwatch and be aware of everything that's going on on the bases, including the check swing for the hitter and such, so it just didn't work. It can work with a three- or four-man crew, but not with a two-man crew. Hutchinson found that one off, and it's one and two. I felt a couple of sprinkles just moments ago. I don't see any up in the lights, so. The ball and two strikes to Hutchinson as he digs into the box. D'Onofrio at second. Wiles at first, he's the pinch runner, swing and a miss. And it's a foul tip into the glove of Rulai. And Hutchinson is down on strikes, and there's two outs in the inning. Now batting number 26, Joe Gallagher. There's no lightning in the area, but the rain is kind of creeping in kind of close on us now. The batter is Joe Gallagher. He's 0 for 3 tonight, two strikeouts and a ground out but he has a chance to keep the inning alive and drive in a run. Big quality at bats for young guys. Just need to let them see some pitches. Don't worry about the results right now. Called strike on the inside corner. Hutchinson gets a nice chance to swing the bat. Now Gallagher gets a chance early on against a good conference club. Quality at bats regardless of the result. The 0-1. Fouled off, nothing in two.
Now the 0-2. Check swing. And he'll be called out from our umpire in second. So Gallagher goes down on strikes for the third time tonight. The Tritons get no runs on one hit, no errors, and leave two on base in the seventh. After seven, they still lead at eight to six here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. Back at the Turley Athletic Complex as we begin the eighth inning. A new pitcher for the Tritons will be Chase Acuff. He'll come over from his shortstop position. So that means the Tritons will need a shortstop. It'll be Nate Hibbs and also another defensive change. Gunnar Warmer comes in to play first base for Eckert here in the eighth. This being a non-conference game, we're playing a complete game rule, I'm sure, and that's why Bo decided to go with Acuff in the eighth as opposed to the ninth. With rain coming in pretty quick, starting to spit a little bit right now. You get Acuff out there, you shut him down. If you get washed, it's a complete game and you get the win. Mikey Naver at the batter. He took a strike on the first pitch from Acuff, and that one missed a bit low. One and one to count. Navarrete is 0 for 2 tonight. He does have a sacrifice fly. That one is chopped towards short. Hibbs will get a chance to play here. He throws it to Warmer at first, who holds the bag and the first out of the inning. Boy, a nice play on both ends. The ball finds you when you get in the game. Nice play by Warmer at first base. I think Acuff has, has shrunken his, his lead foot angle. He looks like he's really coming from a seriously acute angle from behind the hitter now, more so than last year. Acuff makes his fifth appearance on the hill. He's thrown four and two-thirds innings, given up eight hits. As this one's bunt up the line, and it'll roll foul. Four runs, two of them earned. He's got four, uh, excuse me, four strikeouts and one walk, and his earned run average is 3.86. Christian Flint, the batter, he's 0 for 3 tonight. And behind in the count, nothing in one. And that one almost hits him. It's one and one. Now 
the 1-1. One, one. In there for a called strike. It's 1-2 and two now. Early games like this, it's, uh, it's tough on the umpires, too, to see a kid throwing from this severe angle. That one was outside. You really got to stay with the pitch. Acuff stays with that fastball and just changes speeds off the fastball. He had experimented with throwing a breaking pitch for a while, but it started to bother his arm, so he's gone pretty much straight fastballs. And a called strike three. Flint goes down looking, and there's two outs here in the eighth. Took a little bit off that fastball right there. That was nicely done. Left-handed woman up number 14 for the Spartans. Chase, one more. Now number nine, Luke Benoit. Benoit now bats. Came on to play right field, an inning to go. And a called strike to Benoit. The 0-1, high fly ball, belted left oh. field. Oh. And that is out of here for a solo home run for Luke Benoit. And it's now just a one-run ball game. As the score is 8-7. to seven. Unnecessary bad flip. 15 feet off the ground all the way back to the on-deck hitter. Don't act like it's the first time you've ever done it. And I think he's getting a couple of words from the umpire. As he stomps on home plate. As he crossed. Back to the top of the order now. Jose Cadenas. He is 0 for 4 tonight. He pops up. Shallow right center field. Ballard drifts back from second to make the play and retire the side. So a run on a hit with the solo home run from Benoit. Has our score at 8-7 to seven as we head into the bottom of the eighth inning here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. Bottom of the eighth inning here at the Turley Athletic Complex as a light mist begins to fall here on the ballpark. Mike Ballard will lead things off for the Tritons. Ballard 0 for 3 tonight. And Eckert now has just a one run lead. So that ball missed low and in the dirt. 1 and 0 to Ballard. Michael Diemo still on the mound for Tampa, but they have arms loosening up in the bullpen. And that one was just a bit low as well, and it's 2-0. Oh. Two zero fouled out of play. It's two and one. Two 
Johnny, tell them to shut it down. The 2 1. Missed high. It's 3 and 1. Three one popped up right side. Not this wind. And it'll drop foul. As Benoit gave chase. <laughs> Counts now full to Ballard. The 3 2. Fouled right side. Again, the 3 2. Ground ball to short. Flint over to first. A high throw. Sullivan able to touch the bag before Ballard gets there. And there's one out here in the bottom of the eighth. Nice play by Flint. He was playing that ball backhand and it came back on him to the forehand side. And then he showed really good arm strength to get it across the infield. The batter will be Mikey Burke. Burke two for three tonight. Again, a couple more timeouts called. Burke swings and misses at the first pitch from Diemo. Nothing in one. That one missed inside. One and one. And Burke will take time. Pitch outside. It's two and one. I don't see anybody up in the Triton pen, so Chase will probably go for a second inning. Yeah, he'll stay with Acuff. Inside corner called strike two. And Acuff will hit for himself since they lost the DH in the defensive switch. Acuff on deck. Two balls and two strikes to Burke. Defensive swing is missed by Burke, and he goes down on strikes. And now there's two outs in the inning for Acuff. Acuff is three for four tonight. He has an RBI and two runs scored, but last inning... Well, last time up, he grounded into a 6-4-3 double play. And Diemo steps off the rubber. I'm not sure if Diemo can't see the signs. First pitch swung on, grounded to third. Over to first, and Chase is retired. And it's a 1-2-3 inning here in the eighth. After eight, it is eight to seven in favor of the Tritons. We'll head to the ninth for the last chance for Tampa here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network.
www.greatdritons.com. Thank you and go, go Tritons. So how are your classes going? Good. Are you ready for the test? <laughs> and for uh, C+, but I think I'll get it. Right. <laughs> I can't believe it's Yeah. We head to the top of the ninth inning, and Chase Acuff looks to close out this ball game with the Tritons leading just by one run. It is eight to seven. Chase picked up his first save of the year this weekend, looking for save number two here tonight. And he'll face the two, three, four hitters for Tampa. First up will be the second baseman, Drew Earhart. Earhart is one for four. Earhart scored the first run of the game back in the first inning. And he'll take a strike at the knees, nothing in one. The 0-1 tries to drop a bun up the line, but it'll roll foul, and it's nothing in two now. The Tritons will be back home this weekend starting Friday night with a three-game series against Palm Beach Atlantic. Friday night's game is scheduled to start at 6 p.m., and then we have a doubleheader on Saturday. And our Saturday games begin at noon. No balls and two strikes to Earhart. He'll line this one into right field. And it'll drop in front of Burke, and it's a leadoff single here in the ninth for Earhart. That'll bring up the left fielder, Nick Durr. Durr is two for two. Two singles, two walks. Nice piece of hitting by Earhart. Right here, we just need the double play. Tough with the angle of Acuff's arm. Big gap between first and second base. He's got to really bust it in on this guy. Runner goes, first pitch. Fouled off by Durr. If he can keep it in on his hands, he's going to have a better chance of getting that ground ball out. Earhart represents the tying run. He stands at first with no out here in the ninth. Ground ball, Ballard to Hibbs. Over to first, the throw is a bit wide, but the Tritons get the lead runner. Acuff did his job. Forced that pitch in on the batter's hands. Got the ground ball. No chance to turn a two on that. Work one out at a time. First baseman Dan Sullivan now bats with one out and one on. Sullivan 0 for 2. Reached base twice on hit by pitches. Interesting conference right now. I'm sure Bo's telling him we don't want this guy to beat us, so he's going to try to keep the ball down, keep the ball away, make him swing around the pitch. 
pitch is going to be coming in on his hands. You really don't want him to be able to turn on it with the way the wind's blowing. So I think he's going to probably pound the outer half of the zone. It's going to be a tough pitch for the umpire to see and call. A tough pitch to throw for Acuff. But you don't want this guy to beat you. This is the reason he's sitting three in the lineup. Looks like Brandon Castle getting loose in the Triton pen if needed. Yep. That one's fouled out of play. Left side. It's nothing in one to Sullivan. This is where the lefty extending his arms isn't going to hurt you. If you can keep the ball in the outer half of the plate, he'll put it up in the air. The wind's going to play with it, but you don't want him to turn on it. As he gets it in the jet stream, it's going to fly out of here. Pickoff attempt. Dura was back in easily. The 0 1 lined into left center field. That'll drop in for a hit. Arivo gets to it. And they'll hold the runner at third. It's a Double for Sullivan, and he is the go-ahead run. He's now in scoring position. The tying run in Nick Durr now stands at third as the rain comes down a little bit more here at the Truly Athletic Complex. Sullivan put a good swing on that pitch. They're walking the next batter intentionally. Yeah, it's Josh, up double play. Josh Rulai, he is, it was two for two on the day. He's reached base all four times. And now all five times as he takes the intentional walk down to first. And it'll be the DH, Luke McDonald. McDonald is one for four tonight. Tying run stands at third in Nick Durr. The go-ahead run is Dan Sullivan at second. And Rulai stands at first. One out here in the top of the ninth. First pitch just missed inside. It's 1-0. and oh. Acuff's just going to stay with his best stuff. He's going to let the ball work for him. Don't try to throw the fastball too hard. Let it run. Let it come off his fingers. That one missed wide. It's 2-0. and oh. Nice job by Gallagher. A lot of pressure on a freshman catcher. Having a kid throw at him from this angle. Tight ball game. Up by one, ninth inning. This is where kids mature. That's why it's good to play teams like this early in the year. The 2-0. Chopped towards third, and it's a foul ball. So it'll be two and one. McDonald just missed, giving his team the lead here in the ninth. See that pitch again. Roll over on it one more time. Get a 5-2-3 double play to end the game. Swing and a miss, strike two. Two balls and two strikes to McDonald. Take a little bit off this fastball. Hey, Cuff. Gets him to chop it foul, and we'll do it again. Nice job. He's way out in front of that pitch. I'd come back and throw it again. Everybody's geared up right now. It's going to be hard for him to uh, stay off this pitch.
Again, the 2-2. Out of play right side. And McDonald has fouled off some good pitches. Base is loaded, one out, top of the ninth, the 2-2 again. Chopper towards third, D'Onofrio will come home and get the force at the plate to retire Durr. He came right back inside. It's a great pitch. Great pitch by Acuff, got him to roll over on that. Now that is number 27, Mikey Navarat. No need to change anything here. A Cup's got a lot of experience under his belt. Just going to let that ball work for him. Mikey Navarrete now bats. Navarrete 0 for 3 tonight. Bases are still loaded, but there's two outs now in the inning. Chase knows that the thing he can't do right now is try to throw harder. He's just going to stay throw smarter. Ground ball right to Ballard. Off his glove. Throws to first. Not in time, and it'll be a run scored. For Sullivan, and it's tied at eight. The ball was hit right at Ballard. It hit him in the glove and skipped away. Still had time to throw to first. But the umpire said, Navarrete beat the throw. So now the batter will be Christian Flint with the bases loaded and two out. And the go-ahead run now stands at third and Josh Ruley. Swing and a miss, strike one to Flint. Flint 0 for 4 tonight. Again, you go back to the freshman angle. You know, Ballard stayed back on that ball. He didn't take charge of it. He's young. He's going to learn from that. Tough opportunity at that point in the game, but he's going to just take charge of that ball and just get the out. The 0-1, and that'll be a dead ball as it hit. Flint out of the box. Or did it hit him in the box? In the box. Hit him in the box, so it'll be strike two. Now the 0-2 outside. It's one and two. The one two is fouled out of play and we'll do it again. Acuff comes set on the one-two. And again, this one's lined out of play. Get out of this inning, one pitch. We hit. Take the lead back, win the game. Where are we in the lineup coming up, Blake? The Tritons will be with their three, four, five hitters due up in the bottom half. That's where you want to be.
So for, for Eckert coming up, it's going to be Cochran, who's two for four tonight with an RBI. D'Onofrio, who's two for three with a home run and two RBI. And Arriva, who's three for three with three RBI in the bottom half of this inning. Again, the one-two to Flint, and again, he'll foul it off. One, two, line drive. It's a base hit into right center field. One run is in. Rounding third, heading for home is McDonald. He will score. And Tampa leads for the first time since the first inning. A two RBI single for Christian Flint. His first hit of the night puts Tampa back on top at 10 to 8. And tough at bat by Flint. He, uh, he was very patient. Fought pitches off. A cuff stayed. Good stuff. Away, away, away. Flint put a good swing on it. Drove the ball to right center field. Not a mistake pitch at all. He was a pretty good pitch. Buried on the outer, outer half of the plate. Luke Benoit's now the batter. He homered his last time up. His first time up tonight. He'll swing at the first pitch and line this one to Arrivo in left to retire the side. But three runs on three hits, one error, and two left on base for Tampa in the top half of the ninth. They take the lead. It's 10-8. Spartans on top here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. The bottom of the ninth inning, and the Tritons trail by two in a new pitcher for Tampa. Jacinto Arredondo. Arredondo. Arredondo had a great season for the Spartans last year. Making his sixth appearance of the year. He is 2-1 and one on the season. He's thrown 18 innings, given up 16 hits, four runs, he has three walks and 23 strikeouts. He was almost unhittable in postseason play last season. Ten runs on just 11 hits for Tampa. The Tritons have eight runs on 13 hits. Sam Cochran will lead things off for the Tritons. Cochran two for four tonight. Two runs and an RBI. It's 
see what kind of an approach Arredondo takes here, whether he tries to stay away or whether he just pounds the ball in. Fast balls fouled off. Nothing in one to Cochran. Another foul by Cochran. It's nothing in two. Redondo just challenging with the fastball. Not going to do anything cute. He's going to go right after the hitters. He's got a lot of confidence. Chopper. Sullivan fields and is able to retire. Cochran for the first out here in the bottom of the ninth. Mitch D'Onofrio will bat. He is two for three. Scored two runs tonight and has two RBI. Pitch misses upstairs, 1-0 to D'Onofrio. Ground ball. Earhart fields, throws over to first, and there's two away here in the bottom of the ninth. Nick Arriva will be the batter. He is three for three tonight. And the Tritons need a two-out rally. You know, I don't think the score is indicative as to how much the Tritons really got out of this game tonight. You got some young guys in opportunity. Here's Arriva with another hit. And he is four for four tonight. You said early in the game, you know, he's not a 237 hitter. It's just not his style. He gets, he gets after it at the plate. Young guys get a chance to play early on against a team like Tampa. It's a conference school. You just love this opportunity, man. Regardless of the of the outcome, you love to get the chance to play. Pinch hitter. Caden Ellis will bat for Hibbs. Nellis, a freshman from Noblesville, Indiana. And he'll take a strike. This feels like a balmy July night for him. It does. Noblesville just north of Indianapolis. The 0 1 called strike on the outside corner. It's nothing in two. The 0 2 outside. It's one and two. Can't see any radar gun out here. I don't know where he is, but he's he's definitely sitting high, high 80, low 90s. Ninety-one, ninety-two. Just had that clarified. First at bat of the year, first game of the year for Nellis. Uh, he'll go down looking. It's a tough loss, tough loss, but you learn a lot from games like this. Arredondo comes in and closes it out. He'll pick up the save. Diemo will get the win. Acuff will get the loss. Tampa will move to 9-4 on the year. The Tritons will fall to 4-7.
That was a 95 mile an hour fastball to end the game. Just nothing the freshman can do with his first at bat of the year. Welcome to college seeing baseball. Seeing that fastball. <laughs> Welcome to college baseball. Yikes. Tampa will win this midweek game 10 to 8. They had 10 runs on 11 hits, one error. They left eight on. The Tritons had eight runs on 14 hits, one error. They left seven on base. Eckert is back in action this Friday night as they take on Palm Beach Atlantic.